What's up, y'all? We have a customer that got himself in a predicament. Uh, all right, so that's not that's not the worst of it. This came off of a front door, and he had a handyman come uh, come put in new locks for him that they bought at Home Depot, and for some reason couldn't figure out uh, why the new Home Depot lock would not uh, fit in this place. So started. It looks like prying it. There's sheet metal stripped off right there, and it had a uh, little problem right there, obviously. So that is not easily fixable because it's all twisted up. There's literally no way to fix that problem, but. He decided to go with the thumb turn style instead because I do have a few of these. So I'm gonna give him a choice on whether he wants to do, do a shinier one with no marks on it or one that has some scratches on it. I'm sure just to save the money, he'll get the one with the scratches, but that's the same footprint. Actually, there's two different styles of these. One's a little bit fatter and drops down a little bit more. Uh, uh, but luckily I have these. But the main problem here uh, is gonna be, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and soak this, but we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do another Baldwin mortise lock. We have some major issues right here with the faceplate, but luckily I do have a faceplate. So let's see if we can go ahead and start getting this guy out using, of course, our excess. I don't know if that's going to reach down in there. Uh, actually, let's just go ahead and remove these screws because this faceplate is toast for sure. May be able to hammer it back into place. But like I said, I do have some replacement faceplates from locks that have died. Usually the faceplate is not the problem in these locks. It's everything else, so... Spring, there goes the spring. It's okay, we know how to get them back together, don't we? So, uh, come on out. This may not get down in there. Okay, let's see if we can. Come on, come on extra small, you can do it. You can do it. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, gonna need to get a needle nose for this one yep ha we're not all right let's go ahead and fasten it down to the block i just made a new block for the time being so my old one was getting kind of stripped out where we screw the screws down into it Let's see why this guy's not coming out. I'm guessing it's because of the bent faceplate, but there may be other issues going on in here. I hadn't get this out yet. Yeah, I'm gonna take you off first. Obviously it needs some lube, but that bolt is at an angle, which worries me. This is a 6020. This is an old fella. Blue case is a pre. I don't know. Pre 70s, like somewhere in the 80s or 70s, they switched from blue case to uh, the standard case. I could just switch this guy straight out, but I'm trying to save this guy some money. And there's probably not a whole lot wrong with this. Oh, I might add, this is a uh, two and three quarter back set. So that actually makes this hard. I don't have many of the two and three. Oh, this is bent. Look at this. Hold up. Got a problem there. Got a problem there for sure. Let's go ahead and take it out. See if we can straighten it out. Bent badly too. Oof. Oof. 
Oof, oof, oof. Uh, okay, and then this guy. What can we do here? Let's get this back into place. And uh, we're not going to take... Oh, uh, that's... It's a little bit stripped out. I don't know. Oof. Oof, oof. Whole lot of oof. The bolt is actually bent too. How in the ass did this happen? How did that get bent so badly? Look at that. That's that's the swoop up style bolt right there. Oh my gosh. Not good, not good. Let's see if we can straighten it up on the vise. Rip that out. Yeah, definitely need a new faceplate. Definitely need a new one of these. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Right back. Okay. 60-20. Right hand. Let's see what parts we can salvage out of this guy. Because it's already missing some parts. Oh, no, come back. It's, uh, yep, that looks good. Okay. Bolt is Figure out if that's actually. Yes, it is bent. Oh man, how did that happen? How indeed. But everything else looks good. We did lose our ball bearing and spring, so I need a pair of tweezers because that ball bearing and spring is somewhere in here. Spring's still in there, but the ball bearing is somewhere else. Oh, there it is. You do not belong there, ball bearing. Along there. Oh, and uh, I guess we can just take this face plate too. Might be the easiest way to do it right now. Um, I do have to get that out, so let me go grab. Uh, let me go grab uh, retaining ring pliers. I'm gonna use these tiny, tiny Nipex, which is pretty much only good for this guy right here. I know now to buy the next size up. So let's get that out. See if we can transplant it into the new face plate. Okay, bent, bent, bent. Bent, broken, bent, broken, bent, broken. Just taking the face plate off over here. Of course, we have to get that out as well. the right way y'all okay face plate off okay face plate off face plate on
tie screws in. In case you're wondering what these screws are, besides holding the faceplate on, they do actually perform a function. If you have a beveled door, you, uh, you can adjust the bevel of the faceplate to match the bevel of the door. And you do that by loosening the screws and beveling it whichever way it needs to go. This one is a straight on face plate. No bevel needed. Baldwin locks can break in a variety of ways. Uh, and uh, one of those ways is letting a handyman mess with it. on how the bolt got that though. Okay, we're gonna have to loosen this. Never tighten screws all the way down, y'all. Until they're all in. Come on. Come on. Okay, you're not gonna... You're not gonna get started there, are you? Don't guess so. Nope, to fix that. Hook something in the hole to center it. Try that again. Okay, leave a little bit loose. Come up here to the top. Poke something in the hole to center it so we don't have to fight it. Doot, just like that. outside see if dude's taking my parking spot and finally get it in there all right go ahead and put our pen back now Get to crimp it. Which basically means pushing it down or, or just coming in here and giving it a little bend. Oh, so it doesn't pop out like that. Alright, so we're just gonna give it a little bend by twisting it that way. Okay, next, this guy goes in there, just like that. Let's make sure that's tight. Yep. Okay. Just like that. And we need to see if this guy is still good. I'm not sure if it is or not. Where's the end of it? definitely bent and that's probably because they twisted it off I believe these are reverse thread yep strip the ever-living crap out of that hey it's the first of the month y'all happy February 1 all right let me go see if I got a replacement one of those I don't know if I do or not which is going to be kind of a problem right Kind of a problem. 
Dogs are barking, babe. Guess that means the siren's going off at the house, too. <laughs> yep. Oh. I didn't do it. Well, we made another month. Hey, Shit. No month. You know how hard that is? All right. Now we're putting the disc in because this is switching from a double cylinder to single cylinder. And what this disc does is uh, because this has two sides, it has to connect if you only if you're missing the disc when you tighten it down it puts pressure only on one side so you have to have this disc you don't have to have it but it's a good idea to make sure that it stays uh, it's kind of uh, level when they tighten it down and these are kind of a pain in the butt to get started you may just wait until we take it off the block i think that's what i'm gonna do all right last but not least oh we gotta get that ball back we gotta get the let me go find one of these okay i forgot this needs to oh not that one this one needs to be soaking we're gonna reuse this because it matches the trim on the outside which is all dark luckily that didn't get hurt and uh, I did, I found one. I found one. So let's see. Take that out. Let's see if we can reuse this part. It's reverse thread. No, we don't want to reuse that part, do we? Is that the same? That is the same. So let's go ahead. But we do need that little doodad. There it is. Okay. So, doot. Do there, just like that. That. Put your ball back. Just like this. Hardest part. Hmm. Oop, get in there. Oh, you can do it. Okay, stay just like that. There we go. Go about the center. And I think once we put this guy back up here that we will be good. Is that why it's bent? Okay, now let's get all the little doodads in line. Yep. Yep. Okay. 
Hey, come on, come on, where are you? What's holding you up? I think this guy. Try this guy. Something's holding us up right here. Yep, there it goes. Hey, 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 hey. All right. Should be fixed. Get to tighten your other screws.
Okay. Nope. Uh, we'll just give this a go. this guy y'all so looks like they cut that which is a common common little tactic let me get a paper towel okay so what else did we have messed up oh we gotta screw this guy in don't we let's get this guy screwed up it shouldn't take but a sec But then these can be pretty infuriating. Let's back this screw out to try to get in. And you don't want it to be. Too far in or too far out. I'm sure there's a tool to uh, to do this. Do we have a big old flat head? Well, hold up. I still have to make keys for the ball one lock too. Yeah, we're gonna need a. We're gonna need. Let's try it the other way. Yep, big old flathead. As soon as I walked away from the camera, it started threading. Ain't that just about right. Then we're gonna screw this all the way down because it's gotta, it's gotta be right in line with that. So it actually screws down quite a bit. Right there. So now, see when you tighten it down, it'll tighten up against that and the cylinder on the outside. Speaking of, we have this we have this i'm gonna go ahead and cut this now just because i don't want to have to do it on site so we're gonna go ahead and cut that a little bit bigger you can see how they did it we have so many problems with foundation and stuff and it, it actually had a metal metal backer there so i think i got everything let me put my flashlight back in my pocket and uh, make keys for this cylinder see how bad it is uh, and cut this okay we're gonna use some guards to protect the metal here. Not that big of a deal, but you know. Oh look, safety goggles right there ready for us. All right, let's get that crank crunk down a little bit more and uh, use this guy to cut that center out. <sighs> opened up like that so that they're at a huge problem and uh that's good to go and cylinder keying up let's see if we can even get it apart right here where'd it go where'd it go where'd it go where am i yep 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 one good thing about them is they're our actual solid brass so typically you can shim them
the uh, cylinder stripped out a little bit. It should be okay though. Let's, uh, let's give it a go before we go to the trouble of doing that. Yep, we're, we're good. We're good there. All right, Shim. No biggie. Key went right in. And feeling pretty good. Yeah, we can get this guy shimmed over. That was the fourth pin. There's the third pin, a little crunchy. There's a second, even crunchier. And one, we should just be able to jiggle it, yay. Keyed up just fine, so we are good to go. Make sure we take everything with us so we can show them all the parts that were replaced. And uh, honestly, it's gonna equal pretty much the price of a whole new mortise body. Not quite, but almost. But as you saw, that one already was in pieces, so it was already no good to us except for a donor lock. And that's what you keep donor locks for. One piece breaks, but the other ones are still good. And we have this a beautiful, if you want to call it that, mortise cylinder. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, y'all. We're going to go put this on the door and hope everything works out, which it should. So we'll catch y'all next video.